My name is Chris Kiek with Kiek Technology Solutions. I'm a Tecla Structures Consultant. I've been working with Tecla since about 2005, and I've been working with the Tecla API since its conception in 2007. In this video today, I'm going to talk a little bit about automated connection checking as well as uh, automatic connection application in Tecla Structures. Now, there's a lot of hype in the construction industry right now around artificial intelligence and algorithmic design and detailing. And uh, what I'm going to show you in this video today is kind of the grassroots uh, design patterns and thought processes around using connections that detailers and the expertise that detailers apply in their Tecla models and how to learn from how different connections and properties have been used at different framing conditions and then automatically try to remember that and apply that in other similar cases on the same job or on future jobs. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so I'm here inside of a Tecla Structures model, and I want to start by illustrating what is the challenge or problem for detailers in Tecla Structures. Uh, so first of all, I want you to see that there's some connections already here, but I'm going to delete out this uh, connection and show you what detailers do to apply connections in the model. They usually come over here to the Applications Components panel, and they have to search for the component that they're going to use based on what they see on the connection design schedule or the design drawings. So here I'm going to be using uh, Shearplate Simple 146. So I'll open this up and what the detailer would do is they would transfer information that they see on the connection design schedules and sketches or the design drawings and they transfer that on the inputs here on each of these tab pages. Now when you're a new user and you're not familiar with what all these different settings do, sometimes it's a little bit of an overwhelming experience and you're trying to figure out what things need to go where. Now once you do get some standards and things set up uh, based on the job or based on your fabricator settings or connection design uh, you know, standards, then you can save those different settings away so that we don't have to type in things over and over and also to help prevent errors. But every time you have to apply a connection at a different beam size or different end reaction or different framing condition, you gotta come in here, load those different settings or type in the different values you want, press apply, okay, pick on your primary and your secondary and actually apply that connection. Now, just think about that. If you had a really large production job, this is not a big uh, job at all, uh, but if you had a large production job, that can be very tedious or potentially an error prone process. And uh, you don't want the detailer doing that over and over. You almost want for a specific framing condition uh, and end reaction or scenario here in the model to actually kind of keep a memory of that and then automatically learn from that and apply that the next time that condition comes up. So that's something that we want to do to help solve that problem and reduce uh, the ability to, to enter in the wrong information or apply the wrong connection. Now to combat this, what detailers will do is they'll set up auto defaults and auto connection within Tecla. So if we go to catalogs, auto connection, and then the catalogs, auto default settings, uh, basically here underneath auto default settings, if I uh, go to the tab page here where this particular connection 146 is, I can create a bunch of individual rule sets underneath here that are going to apply different saved uh, connection settings based on different beam sizes and reactions, etc., and different framing condition scenarios to automatically apply those different save settings. And then here underneath auto uh, connection, what I'm doing is I'm telling it, here's the different framing conditions that can be applied uh, by auto connection. And then here underneath each one of these, there can be different rules that are set up saying which connection number or type should be applied at different member types or profile types or sizes. Um, you know, joist would get a different connection than uh, just a regular wide flange uh, beam to beam or beam to column. And so this takes time to set up but it's extremely powerful. You can do a lot of straight up structural jobs uh, by setting this up really well. Um, there are some limitations like looking at cope sizes and certain things like that, um, but this can be set up to help automate that process. But again, this takes a fairly technical person to go through, learn this and set it up. And then it's not as awesome to set up for a job specific uh, you know, use case. So here I'm gonna just go ahead and cancel that out. And that shows you the first step that people try to do to help automate that connection application process. Okay, so the next thing that Tecla users try to do is they try to take their existing spreadsheets or digitized uh, schedules of their connection design information and then try to automatically hook that up and link that to Tecla using the Tecla API. And this is an extremely powerful process, but it does take a significant investment of time uh, and testing in order to make sure that you've got everything correctly mapped for pulling out information from Tecla, feeding that to the spreadsheets or the external calculation, and then returning that data and mapping it correctly to the Tecla components in the model. 
And I've seen a couple of really great software companies uh, do that integration as a third party uh, tool that they sell on top of Tecla structures. And I've seen, and I've done it myself, uh, some of these integrations, but I was just trying to find a much simpler way without doing all this legwork of automating the connection design and more instead just remembering what uh, experienced detailers have actually applied in the model and then just remembering that and then applying that at a similar framing condition on another spot in the job or on another job using the same uh, connection design standards. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see if we can find a way to somewhat solve this problem without having to do all this additional legwork. Okay, so let's say that I've got this connection in here and I know that this uh, beam coming into this column size, so this is a 24 by 55 uh, coming into this uh, W14 by 74 column flange. And then I'll even go to the user defined attributes and on the end conditions tab, I can see the end reaction here at the end of that beam. Now what I wanna do is I wanna store that uh, framing condition. And I also wanna store that with that framing condition, this particular connection number and all of its settings in that dialog box have been stored and applied at this particular framing condition. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my tools and I'm gonna to go to my component check tool. And I'm simply just gonna select on that component and I'm gonna press the store button. Then on the stored connections tab, it just keeps a history essentially of uh, basically that framing condition and all of the parameters related to that particular connection. So how does that uh, uh, like matter? Well, let me just select on a couple other components here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll apply that on the other side of the model for similar framing conditions and see if that works. So I'll select these and I'll also press store. And then now you can see that those have been applied there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the other side and then uh, just go to this side here of the building and uh, maybe I know that this is exactly the same, maybe I don't. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say pick uh, connect and I'm gonna pick the column, pick that beam, middle mouse button, look at that, applies the connection, pick that beam, uh, or pick the column and then the beam, pick the column and then the beam, and it applies those connections. Well, let's say that I come over here, pick column, beam, middle mouse button, there's no connection applied. Column, beam, middle mouse button, no connection applied. And then here I get a report that says that these two different framing conditions that uh, there was no rule that's been stored here for it to, to remember and to apply at that similar framing condition. So basically this is, it's a very simple concept. It's like not rocket science, but I'm just basically training or storing this information to basically tell this at different framing conditions with the same criteria to just apply that same connection again and to use those same settings in a different scenario. Now at first, this is gonna be a little bit tedious as you're starting to build this up, but you can build this up for a job and then you can also store this in your firm folder and then just apply this on other jobs where you're doing the same connection schedules uh, or a very similar job with very similar loading conditions and connection types, and you can use the same rules or criteria that you've done before. Now, if you really wanna take this to the world of like artificial intelligence, and uh, even just kind of making this a bit more algorithmic, I could probably make uh, like basically some checks that are looking for certain properties and looking at how close things are. So I could almost tell it that like, hey, it seems like when I have this type of framing condition or these uh, similar sizes within kind of a range of uh, variances, then I should automatically predict which type of connection and properties that I should try to do there uh, based on doing this over and over and over again. Here, this is very uh, linear and logical, right? I'm just I'm just remembering the information that I care about uh, for a framing condition and then just saying what connection number and what setting should I apply here. This is still extremely powerful, but it takes a little bit of uh, just kind of applying connections and storing them until you get that cache of connections built up. But again, this is nowhere near compl as complicated as what I was showing you with the, uh, basically the auto defaults and auto connection, as well as writing your own custom connection uh, design software on top of Tecla structures. Okay, so now I'm at a beam to beam condition and I've got this connection here. I've uh, gone in and I've set the number of bolts to four bolts, uh, the bolt diameter and all the information I want here and I'm going to store this connection. So that just added that uh, 146 connection here to the list. And there we can see there's the connection code. Okay, so now instead of uh, picking the connections one by one, uh, what I can do is I can actually, let's just say I even window around the entire model, right? Like let, I don't have enough rules to connect everything, but let's say I do that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say auto connect. 
So rather than me having to set up all the rules, I'm just gonna read these rules from the stored framing conditions and the stored connection settings uh, as I go along in the model. And then I'm just gonna you know, tell it to try to automatically connect. Now I'm, I'm getting a whole bunch of like, you know, warning messages here because there's basically a bunch of framing in the model that doesn't have rules associated with it. It's just telling me that so that way it can come back and go, oh, hey, maybe I need to make a manual connection there and I need to uh, set up a rule and store that in the dialog box. But uh, check this out. Uh, for all the other uh, beams that are of a similar framing condition between those two uh, beam sizes with the same end reaction, uh, it automatically applied the connections. And this is really powerful. If I select on this one right here though, because the girder and the supporting member is a different size, if I try to auto connect, it's gonna basically say, hey, I don't have a framing condition for this, uh, so I'm not sure exactly what you're trying to do. So that shows you uh, basically I have an automated auto connect, right? Uh, just as I go based on manual connections that I'm applying, I'm just storing or caching the framing condition and the connection and the properties I used at that framing condition. And then, uh, you know, of course I have programmed some auto connection routines that I'm doing here uh, to find the framing condition. But once those framing condition uh, logic has been programmed and you know what you're telling uh, this tool or techlet to remember and store, uh, basically, you can just, you know, as you run along, you can automatically remember connections and then automatically apply them. Okay, so the last thing, which is actually the original reason I wrote this program, was to automatically identify and find connections that the detailer had input incorrectly. Um, and this actually happens all the time, and uh, checkers spend a considerable amount of time doing a model check and verifying that the detailer put the right connection in at every location. And that, uh, that can be very time consuming. So, Let's actually create this scenario where there's something wrong. So I'm gonna come in here and change the number of bolts. Maybe I come in here and I change this to three bolts and I applied the wrong connection at this uh, particular location. And then uh, maybe on this one, I'm gonna delete it out and the detailer was just you know happily going along and they put in the wrong uh, type of connection at this other location here. So now I have two connections, one the wrong connection type and one uh, the right connection type, but with the wrong settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tell this thing to go ahead and check the model. So it goes through, looks through all the connections, and then basically gives me a report and tells me uh, what's okay and what has had some problems. So first of all, I'm gonna take a look at this one here. I'll just double click on this and it highlights the shear tab. So if I come over to that, I can just look at the properties and it looks like the number of bolts are different. So on the correct connection from the stored connections, it's four bolts, but on this particular checked connection, it is three bolts. So here I can manually fix this and then recheck it. Um, or, uh, you know, let's come over here and take a look at this one. So double click on this and it highlights that connection. Here you can see that uh, the framing condition is the same, but I've got the wrong connection number and code used uh, for one connection versus uh, what's actually been stored for this framing condition. And then here you can see that there's a whole slew of properties. And actually, if you look in the checking results, you'll see that it shows you the percentage of similar properties between uh, the checked connection versus the stored connection. And you can see the percentage of match there. Um, so this one has a pretty low uh, similarity rate because it's two totally different connection types on here. All right, so now I could of course manually fix these and then just uh, recheck and just see if everything's been corrected. Um, or what we can do is we can just say, let's uh, fix the model. So we'll just say fix. And then uh, what it should do is it fixes that. Now it fixes based on my selection. So I only had that one selected here. So I'll select this other one and I'll say fix on that. And then you'll see that the number of bolts has changed. And then you'll also see that here it deleted out the clip angle connection and put in the 146 connection. Now, this gets a little bit hairy if you have like a 143 there and then you meant to have like two 146s because 143 has shared bolts for near side, far side, secondary. So I haven't quite got that all figured out. Um, and that's probably the most complicated thing to deal with in Tecla is that, you know, uh, for clip angle connections, if it's just a single secondary, you use a different connection number than uh, like uh, when there's two secondaries on either side of the girder. And that's probably the trickiest thing to, to kind of write automated logic and automated fixing tools for. Um, but you know it, it can be done, but it's a little bit more intricate and involved. But there you go, that shows you the power. Like again, I originally wrote this to just automatically find where the detailers have been putting the wrong connections in at different beam sizes and different framing conditions and detect that and then show them what they need to fix to automate the checking process. But here, if I can also help automate the fixing process or 
uh, let's say that the connection engineer changes like uh, the number of bolts or certain connection information for certain framing scenarios and I need to massively apply that across the model, then here I can kind of check for that, you know, change the checked connection on one of them and then try to scan the rest of the model of all those other conditions and then automatically fix those uh, to those new changed uh, connection settings. Thanks again for watching my video on automatic connection checking and application in Tecla structures. And again, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions. I'm a Tecla structures consultant. And if you have any Tecla structure setup, training, or API development needs, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and we can take a look at how to solve your particular problem.